My recent journey to Bellevue, Washington to talk with Evergreen's David Hay resulted in a fascinating conversation about the changing phase of the client-manager relationship. David also talked about Bubble 3.0, his lifetime chronicling of the current markets and about real estate's part in what is unfolding as he writes. There was no way I was leaving this on the cutting room floor. Something I want to talk to you about is is um, is Bubble 3.0 because you're you're doing something now which I, I think is such a great idea. This real time. One of the few. Well, no, it, it, it look it, <clears throat> they'll come around like they always do. But talk a little bit about what Bubble 3.0 is and and how you kind of came up with this. I, I think it's a great idea. So it uh, it started really when you were going after Bitcoin back in December, and that's when I figured I just really needed to do a. We called it the Bubble Watch. It started out at Bubble 3.0, started out as Bubble Watch Eva. And as you know, we, we nailed that one pretty much right spot on. Uh, so I think the Bubble Watch Eva went out in mid-December and Bitcoin crashed a week later. later at least started to crash. Uh, bubble 3.0, it was kind of like, is I realized that I really am not out there on record as saying that I think this is the third bubble and that it is in my opinion, the biggest bubble ever, which became highly controversial to say that. So I thought, well, let's let's document this. And part of it was a belief that so many years have gone by that we're not that close from the, the break point. And I actually thought Bitcoin crashing was indicative that it was starting. Yeah. The crash was starting. Again, a lot of people disagree and said, oh, no, that's a French asset class. That doesn't really count. But that was really the uh, the impetus. So my logic of why this is the biggest bubble ever really loops back to the bond market and interest rates. Because if you think about it, interest rates drive almost everything when it comes to asset prices. So by definition, when you've driven interest rates down to zero or negative, and you know as well as I do, there's still $8 trillion of bonds around the world with negative interest rates. What's that going to do to asset prices? So I finally, after all the arguments I had with clients and, and even investment professionals, I thought, okay, let's approach it from the interest rate standpoint, because that one, nobody can argue yeah, with. Yeah. This is the biggest bond bubble ever. They go, yeah, okay, well, we're on board with that. Yeah. So, but then the argument becomes, or the, uh, I guess the, the expansion of the theme becomes, okay, well, what are those implications for everything else? And once you accept, I mean, they kind of get themselves in a box by accepting the yep. biggest bubble ever in bonds because it does directly relate to so many other things. Real estate being an obvious example. And at one of them, we ran a great quote from uh, Adam Smith from back in the 1700s talking about at that time how in England interest rates had temporarily gone way down and how it had created a property bubble. And he kind of did briefly explained why. You know, basically it relates to the cap rate. So I you know, made that same argument. I said, that's exactly what's been happening this cycle in the US and around the world. And as a result, because of the biggest bubble ever in Pond, you got the biggest bubble ever in real estate. Now, second, for this, I mean, who would have thought 10 years ago that we would have done it again? Yeah, right. But we did. Yeah. So real estate, this obviously, you know, Bellevue has been one of the hottest property markets, uh, certainly in, in the West, maybe in the entire country for a number of years now. And wherever I go, you know, I've noticed recently, New York, Toronto, Miami, the, the, the amount of construction going on. And if you look at this through even mildly cautious eyes, you can just see everybody finishing all this construction at exactly the wrong time. Real estate prices in New York are falling precipitously now. Miami's the same. Talk a little bit about the local market here because it was such a barometer of this booming real estate market. Absolutely. So if we talk long enough, I'm gonna take you by a house that just sold a few months ago, and a few months ago is the key part of this because things have changed radically. But a few months ago, it sold for 14.2 million. I think we'll get a chance to look at it. It's not like some of these mansions around here. So that just gets to the point of how insane, absolutely absurd this market got uh, as recently as a few months ago. So things have changed since June. June was the high water mark. But what's amazing is the Seattle economy is still white hot, mm -hmm. but we still have the tech stocks, tech companies. I mean, just think about all the Amazon employees around here and their options are worth just yeah. astronomical amounts, but Microsoft too. I mean, Microsoft stock is, you know, it's tripled in recent years. 
then there's all the other guys, you know, the Valve and Smartsheet. I mean, this is a hotbed of tech wealth creation. And it reminds me of my friend who was in the Bay Area back in the late 90s. He worked for National Semi, and he bought his house for a very high price at the time. His house, he says, still isn't worth what it was then. Right. But he goes, I didn't care because I bought it with Monopoly money. And I said, what do you mean Monopoly money? Oh, there, I had a bunch of options that were you know, just ridiculous. So I used those, so I really didn't care. Well, that's what we have around here, a lot of Monopoly money. At play. Now, that's going to change because these tech stocks will eventually break like they always do. But what's interesting is as healthy as the Seattle area real estate economy is, already prices are falling. I'm not saying sales are falling, they are. Inventories are way up, 60, 80, 100% on condos. Prices are down and they're down 10% or more. Mm -hmm. So the house next to us, their daughter just sold her, uh, she had a townhouse over in Ballard. She sold it for 700,000, but the realtors told her if she had listed it two weeks earlier, she would have gotten between 800 and 850. Really? And I'm hearing this constantly. First try on over there, the prices are falling like a rock. I've never seen this happen in a good economy. I mean, obviously in the Great Recession, prices fell, but this is a big time canary in the coal mine that's, that's fallen off the perch. Real estate matters. And frankly, if you go back and look at housing, it's a great leading indica indicator yeah. for the economy and for the market. Our friends, our partners at GAPCAL have done some really good work on housing leading the stock market. So we, people say, well, yeah, you've been saying this stuff, being worried for years, but things are different. Real estate falling is different, and it's falling around the world, it's not just here. Stock markets are falling around the world. Well, the home, Bond building, stocks, falling. The home building stocks are getting battered. The oh, new home, home sales building are stocks have been crushed. Yeah, that, that whole- but Even that, Home Depot's turning to crack. But, but housing, you know, it's funny, isn't it? Because the last bubble, housing was all anyone cared about. It was the focus of everything, was the housing market. Everyone was getting rich through their house. Now everyone's getting rich through their 401ks, and no one's paying attention to the housing market. You know, there's, there's almost a stealth bear market right. on the housing. Right, that's true. It's amazing how suddenly no one really cares about that anymore. No, that's true. It's, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be the flashpoint like it was last time. But still, it's, you know, the, the reason I think this has been the biggest bubble ever is kind of like the bubble in everything. I mean, it hasn't been as dramatic outside of maybe Bitcoin as the housing bubble was back in 07, but just everything has been lifted, which gets back to interest rates. Interest rates have such a, you know, an impact on almost everything. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, housing, it's, it, it wasn't what they were trying to do. They weren't trying to create another housing bubble, but they have.